Hey guys, good morning. Sorry, this is supposed to be out yesterday, but I kind of got stuck in programming hell. Um, so uh, we're just going to jump into it. This is the Marvelous Designer uh, kind of pipe uh, tutorial thing for uh, that I did. Um, I'm working on like a pretty large sci-fi scene um, at the moment, um, and there's a lot of piping and stuff, and I posted some work online just kind of updating people, and then some people had some questions about the pipes and stuff. So or the cloth co co uh, covering for the pipes, I should say. can't speak this morning, I need more coffee. So real quick, what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna jump in and kind of build out um, my little, I call it like a catcher object. I don't I don't know what else, you, you know, you can call it your avatar if you're, well, you know, into the whole Marvelous lingo. Um, you know, the thing that, uh, about Marvelous, uh, for, especially for environment stuff, um, I found it's very scale dependent, so I'm going to show you some things. Uh, hopefully this uh, will help. N this thing is not difficult to do at all, by the way, like the um, cloth piping stuff. Uh, I think what gets people is the deforming part of it um, and like how to deform it. And, you know, if you're just watching this and you don't want to see me uh, do any of this shit, uh, basically, the easiest way to do this is to path deform the object, uh, and I'm going to do that uh, in this tutorial. So first off, we get this guy, divide it, okay, and let me just kind of sort of show something real fast here. Marvelous works in millimeters, uh, you know, I'm a game dude, so um, this thing is fucking huge. Like if we look at this, this is basically inches, these are max units, but they're inches. Um, so 85, 85, it's pretty big. Like a character is about 130, like for the height. So we'll just show you just as a reference point. Um, if you were to assume, like just following like standard Unreal units, it's about 130. Uh, CMs is actually the centimeters now, I think. But UUs are numerically one, one to one. So that's what we'll do. Um, but you know, just remember that everything you're kind of doing right now, the scale is really dependent on what the hell's going to happen in Marvelous, and you're just going to have to scale and readjust it. In the end, probably doesn't make any sense, but just go with it. All right, make sure you reset the X form. Uh, and I should really just be running all of these off of my scripts, so I don't have to fucking hit the button and do it, but whatever. Uh, export selected. To do OBJ's work pretty well, so we're just gonna do this. We're gonna do pipe. Hey, okay. nope. Apparently, uh, there's an object already on there. Um, triangles uh, is typically what I shoot the meshes over to Marvelous with, um, because it seems to like it better. Uh, so now we're in Marvelous. This is Marvelous 8. Um, it doesn't really matter. This can be done in any version of Marvelous, but the newer the versions, the more stable they are, and the more user friendly they tend to be. Um, and again, I'm changing my settings from the default to inches, just so they match the max units. Um, but again, you can already see this thing's effing huge. Um, so I want to show you guys um, really quick, because this kind of trips people up, is right now, I mean, I, my computer's a little older, frankly, I have to upgrade it. Um, but this guy is a particle density of 20, um, and I'm just going to rotate this guy. Make sure your gizmo, by the way, is set under here to world coordinates, tends to make it way easier. Um, and I'm just gonna drop this guy. That should be plenty of resolution for you at this point. Um, you don't wanna work in this with too high or too low of resolution. You just kinda need to figure out um, where there's not gonna be a lot of object penetration. So first thing I do, I'll rotate the object above the little pipe, drape it down, and I hit the space bar to turn on and off the simulation. Um, and you know, you can, stitch in the 2D, but I also like to stitch in the 3D window. Um, it helps a shitload. Um, and this is like a feature that's been in Marvelous for a little bit of time. It was actually in the original version of Marvelous, but they pulled it out for some reason. Um, but it got put back, and I think it was like version 6 or 7. It was a feature, and it was a big deal. Uh, so, ta-da, there's your pipe. Okay, so let's make it look not like total shit. Um, now, there's things that you can do post-stitching. Like, I can scale this guy and it kind of will fuck up the simulation too. Like you can see it's gonna bug out. And I don't actually recommend doing it this way, um, especially if you're doing like clothing and shit. Like, I mean, sometimes you have to nudge and scale things, but you don't wanna do drastic changes like that. It can be kind of a pain in the ass. Um, you either wanna do this before you stitch or 
just do smaller incremental changes but what you can do is you can come down under here with a pattern selected um, and let's go ahead and start playing with these numbers right here the weft in the waft we warp sorry whatever okay and there you can already see like if I keep let's put this up to 250 like it'll go kind of ape shit right but you can really do a lot um, you're actually also going to start to see the pro like the low resolution of the sim so Let's just kind of keep playing with this. You see here, it'll add a little bit more if we needed that. Um, this is kind of a lot though, so let's put this back to like maybe 120. We'll tighten it back up, and we can maybe say 150 on this. Okay, and you can see it actually expands, like physically expands the, the cloth, which is nice. And here we're gonna go, up. let's go back up to 180. Okay, and now for I think some of the ones that I've been doing, I've been like taping the ends. So if you want to do that, um, pretty easy. Just grab these ends here, hold shift, and you can turn on this elastic little modifier here, and that's going to just suck them right in. And you can adjust the strength, of course. The tighter it is, the more the effect is going to ha happen. And then we're going to take this, do the particle, da, 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 particle distance, and again, just save this, like demo pipe um, and then we're gonna take this and put this to 10 all right there it goes smooth it out and again you can change like all your fabric settings and stuff so um, I like to keep the base fabric there and you can like rename it Dave's fab um, and then we can grab this, change the color, and then you can drag it, like just click drag, and it'll put it right on that. And this is also, like if you're coming into this and you're like, hey, I need to change the materials, you have to have a fabric selected, and it has to be under here, like under the physical property settings. It used to be, like depending sometimes, like if you selected the fabric and stuff, you'd be able to like change it down here, just on the pattern window, but they changed that, so you have to physically select the fabric and then come in and then you can change it to pretty much whatever you want uh let's see here where, where, which one looks cool where are you uh there's uh not lightweight nylon featherweight like this nylon featherweight is also a really good thing if you're doing jackets and shit like to do the outer layer um it just kind of looks nice and it gives it um kind of a a better um almost more fabricy kind of look and then let's see here we can adjust the refraction or the reflection and reduce the roughness so we can kind of see here like kind of a more representation of what it'll look like the next thing that I always try to do um, and this will depending on your computer and depending on um, the complexity of the patterns and shit save this before you do this obviously always save in marvelous um, I wish they actually had incremental saves. Uh, that'd be really nice. Um, the next thing we want to do is I want to convert this fabric underneath miscellaneous to quads. And this is going to sit for a second. Um, and then I'll show you why I want to do that. Okay. And so there we go. And the reason why we do this is if you, for additional sculpting and other things that you want to do, like you want to drop turbo smooth modifier on it, you don't want the mesh to be triangulated. Um, it's just a pain in the ass and it's gonna look like shit and then like you can't instantly start sculpting on it you have to do a bunch of processing and shit on Z in ZBrush or whatever program you're using um, so we're just gonna do pipe a cover get this out of here I'm trying to keep this thing as fast as I can but I'm doing it in real time and I'm rambling like I tend to one of my uh, co-workers watched one of my demos and he's like dude he's like you ramble a lot I'm like I have ADD I don't know what to tell you um, so, first off, while that's exporting and setting up its little save thing, I'm just going to come into here, I'm going to do the grid snap, I'm going to go to spline, convert this to an edible spline, and again, you know, your DCC, or sorry, your modeling program, um, do it, like this process, every freaking modeling program has this, so you guys just, you know, make it work for you. Um, I'm just going to get this little path here. Um, select all patterns, don't need the avatar, um, yeah, that's fine, we only have one object. Um, and then, 
we're going to bring this guy in, import cloth A cover. Here he is, it's importing. Okay. And again, because the unit measurement was the same, it's all going to be in. And if you notice too, we also have the shininess, which is kind of cool. Uh, now we don't need this guy anymore, so we nuke him. And let's go ahead and drop Turbo Smooth on that. Okay, we look pretty good. Uh, you can see, did a pretty good job. Um, and this is just a viewport issue in Max, whatever. Um, so let's pop this guy off. And I'm going to do the effect pivot, center to object. And the first thing I want to make sure that we do is always reset the X form. Even if you don't need to, just hit, just get in the habit of hitting it. I might have a little macro that I run, uh, typically when I import stuff and it just freezes it, just it makes it easier. Um, this is like freeze transform in Maya, by the way. Uh, it's very useful. And for the world space modifiers and most of the modifiers to work correctly, you kind of need to have it like this. Um, speaking of modifiers, we're gonna come under the modifier panel, which is right here. And we're gonna grab this guy, uh, path deform, WSM, that's world space modifier. Uh, we're gonna pick the path and then we're gonna select it and it's not gonna do what we want. Uh, let's go ahead and align it and then say move to path. And right now, if I just take this and start moving it along, this is exactly what we'd expect it to have happen. Um, and obviously this thing is not long enough. Uh, this is something that, there's a bunch of different ways around this. Um, you can stretch it, which I don't actually recommend you do. The other thing that you can do is I'm gonna nuke this binding. Um, and this is why, uh, like I'll, like I kind of continue the modeling process after I've done, got out on Marvelous. You know, it's no different than I treat Marvelous like ZBrush or any other kind of an, an intermediary program, um, where I'm just kind of uh, experimenting with it and I'll leave it like where I need to and drop it. If you get like some weird visual bugs or anything, just go ahead and detach the element from this, and then I'm just gonna reset the X form on this just to begin to make sure. Because again, as you expand this, the reset. The X form is basically recentering the bounding box. A lot of the modifiers and most programs use the bounding boxes pretty heavily. And then we're going to come into path to form again, pick path, um, fight the right axis, move to path, and then here we go. So this is about the extent of it. And again, you can squash and stretch and scale and do whatever the hell you want uh, to really kind of make this kind of your own thing. And if you find yourself working in sections, which I tend to do a lot, meaning I'll break like this guy into a few different spots. So I'll go, okay, I like it really crumpled up here. So, and at this point, if you're like, okay, now I wanna use this, you can't pull this off this path to form. It won't work. What you have to do is you have to come under tools and you have to come under snapshot. This is in max, you're gonna do a single mesh. If this, first off, if it doesn't do anything, if you're like, what the hell, where did it go? It means it's probably right on top of itself, so don't keep hitting that button. I, I, dude, I do that all the time, and I end up having like a million fucking things that are just all over the place. And then what you can do, if you have this as a reference, you can then move this guy. So you can kind of like figure out where at on this path is uh, where the remaining segments are gonna go. And again, we're just gonna repeat this process. Grab this guy and shift A and align him right up to that come back to the top view here and do the exact same thing and then obviously you put all your little hard surface couplings and stuff underneath that snapshot grab them shift a there he is cool there's your little pa uh, pipe thing uh, there is something else though that I didn't want to show you guys I was gonna end this video pretty quick uh, it's almost it's only 14 minutes so let's see if I can get it to go to 20 <laughs> um, this is something that is very useful and I think it's super under, underutilized inside of Marvelous, like crazy heavy. Um, so I'm just gonna show this really fast. Um, so for a lot of, and again, I'm approaching this from kind of like the environment nerd standpoint, um, but you know, you see a lot of sci-fi stuff uh, nowadays, it's super, super popular. Um, and if you don't wanna kit bash your shit, you can actually, you know, model it. I'm kidding, I'm being a dick. Um, but if you have to like have kind of a complicated form, and again, you can do this in Marvelous. That's not, you know, you can do everything I'm about to show you, you can do straight in Marvelous. 
Um, but sometimes it's easier to model it off of the existing form. Like I got a chair I have to work on and I'm doing this with like all the headdresses and stuff that's gonna sit on the chair. Just because it's way easier to have the physical mesh and then shoot that over to Marvelous and use it that way. Um, so I got the spline drawn out. Uh, I'm gonna come over here into Garment. And inside of Garment Maker, this is, be careful, like the smaller this density goes, the more triangles you're gonna get. Or no, sorry, higher, my bad, wrong way. I was like, what the hell is it doing? You're gonna get more triangles. Now I've like run into it where I've like dropped this to like one and it's exploded. <laughs> so just be careful. And obviously, hey, look, it looks like the Marvelous Mesh. That's weird. Wonder what we're gonna do with it. I know it's not funny, but it is what it is. Um, so first I'm gonna show you this path, like this little method. Um, and uh, actually, I'm going to just show you the correct thing. That way, I don't have to keep you here the entire time. Um, make sure you have UVs on this thing, okay? They don't have to be the greatest UVs, but they cannot be overlapping. They cannot be. Um, you want them like to be solid, and I'll show you why. Um, we're going to send this over to Marvelous, actually, as a mesh, um, and that way we can use it as a pattern. Uh, Marv. Clean all the OBJs off my damn desktop there. Here we go. File new. File new. No. Okay. Avatar. Delete all avatars. All right. File. Import. OBJ. Okay. Now in our OBJ import options here, we have load as avatar, but underneath this we have load as garment. If we load just this as a garment, it's going to be a mesh, right? Um, it'll be a mesh that we can sim, like I'll show you. So I'm going to grab this. Right? Hella fucking useful. Um, but it gets better. We're going to delete this. File, import, OBJ. Like, by the way, this little technique is super useful if you have to suddenly um, deform a bunch of soft bodies. Like, I don't know, stuffed animals, um, bed clothes. I mean, like, there's just a million things that you're like, oh, it'd be nicer if I could sim this. This is a good way to do it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Like, if you're, like, instead of trying to model it or sculpt it or whatever, the sim's probably going to look more realistic. Load is garment, but this time we want to trace 2D patterns from UV. If this fails, it's going to give you, an like, it'll, it'll scream at you. It'll go, hey, dude. Um... The patterns are mismatched. Like if you have like something that has multiple segments, like the other day I was working and I did I did like a teddy bear, and that teddy bear had multiple patches. And those multiple patches, you can bring those multiple patches in, like in the actual physical geometry, like the physical mesh form, and it'll have all the patches. But sometimes it doesn't stitch them all together. Um, but you cannot have overlapping UVs or anything in that. And if you don't, it will throw out those sections, and you're going to have a mesh that has like holes and stuff missing. But the difference between this and what we just did is if you looked over here on the right, this is now a physical pattern. Okay, so look. All of that shit now is in here. So if I wanted to, and I hope like all you sci-fi guys are getting super excited about this because I'm using this on my sci-fi scene and it's really fucking cool. Um, I'm going to grab my pin box here. And this, by the way, this technique is a really great way to do all of those sci-fi panel coverings, like all the bubbly things that you see, like the wall sections and shit. This is how a lot of people do them. Um, yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah, my old uh, buddy, Paul, uh, may rest in peace, he uh, used to do a lot of uh, this stuff uh, in Marvelous, and this is one of the ways that he would do it. Um, every time I do it, it makes me, it reminds me of him. All right, so we're gonna just make sure these, these are all pinned. All right, and now grab this, and let's go ahead, and this is like literally, it's, it's, a, it's a marvelous designer thing. So uh, let's, before we get crazy, let's go ahead and add some pressure. Boom, ba -da -boom, ba -da -boom, boom. Da -da -da. Come on, dude, everyone loves Queen. And if you don't, well, get better taste in music. That's coming from a guy who listens to pretty much nothing but Norwegian death metal or black metal. I like death metal too, but black metal is definitely 
Definitely my thing. Um, anywho. So now that that sim, that's a little bit of pressure. Now we can adjust and we can adjust all of the parameters like we did before, like 150 on this. And let's go ahead and make sure all those are live. Look at that, that's kind of cool. And we got this little uh, inner line here. So we can take this and let's increase the fold strength. And let's increase the fold angle. No, did it do it? Why are you not doing it? I did it the wrong way. Oh no, I didn't. It's doing it. Got a little bit of taper in there, a little bit of fold, kind of neat. And obviously there's different ways to adjust this. The other thing too is this will respond to the particle density. Dun, dun, dun. Um, the other one would not. Um, so like if you just import the physical mesh and you're like, shit, I need more resolution, you gotta pre-tessellate it. Okay, like old school ZBrush, pre-tessellate it. Some of you guys will have no idea what that means. Uh, I'm 31 and I feel like I'm fucking 100 years old. Okay, so there you go. Uh, hopefully this is helpful, guys. Sorry, I haven't been doing a lot of tutorials or anything. I've been doing a lot. I'm um, working on my game and doing all that other shit and doing art and working a million hours. So it is what it is, uh, but there will be more probably later this summer. Um, but anyway, I wanted to help you guys out. Hopefully this works. Peace. Bye.